in the way they should. And what I'm saying to you this morning, if you take these scriptures and let them get down into your spirit and your mind, it will change the way you live. So here's what it is. It says, Psalm 3.3, you, O Lord, are a shield around me, my glory and the lifter of my head. As we look at this scripture, the first part that we need to realize is God, night and day, has put a shield around us. Night and day. And a shield means something that's protecting you. And that means from everything, every form of danger that's out there, God has already placed a shield around you. Now, I look at my mom over there, and she's got a shield on right now. You can turn and look at her. She's got a shield on, right? And that's good. It's good to have those kind of shields. But the most important shield of all is the, this invisible shield that the Lord said he's put around us. And, you know, in the Bible, when the disciples were getting scared all the time and freaking out, because they did, he called them people of little faith. He says, oh, you of little faith. And then he reached out his hand and calmed the storm and command the storm to stop. But we don't want to be people of little faith. We want our faith to be big. So how do you get big faith? It's really simple. It's, it's not complicated. You don't have to go to a Bible college. It says that, by the way, if you want to, do it. But it says faith comes by hearing God's word. And so the more of God's word you hear and you let it get into you, the bigger your faith is going to be. And so how many of you, if we're honest, how many of you, Go about each day thinking, God's got a shield around me all day long. He's protecting me night and day. How many of us are, are, are conscious of that? Are really aware that that's, that's what it says, that the Lord is protecting us night and day? Because if you really believe that, you are not going to go through life afraid, stressed out, worried, and, and falling apart when stuff happens that wasn't on your schedule. And you know that, that there's going to be stuff happening that it's not on your schedule. Hey, this isn't on my calendar. This flat tire isn't on my calendar. You know, so the thing is, but everything in life, eventually you find out life is just full of surprises. Some of them are surprises you like, and some of them you say, I don't like this. I don't like this. But in the midst of whatever we're going through, if we can just realize God's got this shield and he doesn't take it away. It's there all the time. It's there all the time. Now, the Israelites, God gave a visual as they were going through the wilderness. It says that he had a cloud over them by day and then fire by night. They could see fire following them. So they, they actually could physically see that God was with them and protecting them. But my question is, can you believe that you have this protection even though you don't see it? Because here's what happens. Let's be honest. We hear about something bad that happened to a person. It might even be a Christian. Something really bad happened to somebody. And then what does the enemy do? He comes and he tries to convince you that you don't have a shield around you protecting you because, well, look what happened to this person and how come they weren't protected? I'm going to address that today and I'm going to give you a scripture to even address it so that you'll have a way to handle the doubts because there's always an opportunity to doubt, but you handle the doubts with scripture. That's what you do. So let's get to the next scripture. Just so we know, it, most of us just think, hey, stress, it's part of life. Stress is part of life. So, you know, sometimes you're just going to be stressed out. Does God give you stress? No. And so 2 Timothy 1.7 says that God doesn't give us a spirit of fear or stress or worry. He doesn't give that to us. But there are three things he gives us. 
And it's not enough just to go around. I hear most people going around when they, that, that do know the scripture. They go, you know, God doesn't give you a spirit of fear. God doesn't give you a spirit of fear, so don't be afraid. And the person says, yeah, but I'm afraid. They say, but God doesn't give you a spirit of fear. You shouldn't be afraid. What's wrong with you? Well, God doesn't give you a spirit of fear, but I'm afraid. Well, the reason the person's still afraid is because they didn't read the rest of the scripture. Because that's not the scripture. God doesn't give you a spirit of fear. The scripture is actually about what God gives you. It's about what he gives you. So what does he give you? He gives you three things. He gives you power. That's the first one. We've all seen the ridiculous cartoon of an elephant terrified by a mouse. Sometimes as Christians, the devil's the mouse and we're like an elephant. We don't realize we could just step on that mouse and we're running from little things that we shouldn't be afraid of. So we have to know that God's given us power and how much power. Jesus said this, I have given you all power over the enemy. That includes everything that the enemy's trying to throw at you, whether it be financial worry, health worries, freak accidents. The, the Lord's giving you all power over the enemy. The thing is, what we believe ends up affecting what we do in our behavior. And so if you want to know what people believe, watch how they live. So the first thing is he's given us the power. We already have it. But that you have to, you have to break through that doubt. You have to break through that doubt because the enemy's going to come and go, yeah, well, he, he, he's giving you all power, but not, not over the virus. That one he has it. No, no, that's not true. He says, I've given you all power over the enemy. All power. So then we look at the next one. What else has he given you? A spirit of love. And do you know that love destroys the works of darkness? <clears throat> love destroys the works of the enemy. Um, in fact, in regards to fear, it says love has no fear. Isn't that interesting? Love has no fear. Some of us, we don't, don't get near me, stay awake. See, that, that, that's not how love works. If, if Jesus walked into this room in the flesh right now, do you think he'd be social distancing from you? So we have power, we have love. And the third one is so important, a sound mind. What, is that, what does that mean? You know, talking about sound. What is it, a musical mind, a sound mind? What does it mean? Sound mind means a stable mind that isn't falling apart. But again, you say, well, I don't feel like I have a sound mind because it was the anniversary of 9-1-1 yesterday and I watched the TV and I was freaking out and I saw all the, got to revisit all the terrible things that happened 20 years ago. A sound mind will overrule all the negative things that are going on. But in order to have a sound mind, you have to have God's word in your mind. So, how do you overcome the fear of sudden tragedies, sudden accidents, freak accidents, or unexpected things that just show up in the word? It says in Psalm 31, 15, and this is a really important one. It says, my times are in your hands. What is that? The truth is, your life is in God's hands. And Jesus said, 
The enemy can't touch you or do anything to you. He can't do anything without first getting permission. So then we get kind of frustrated and we say, well, if that's true, why does God sometimes allow things? Because it says in the Bible, in James 1, that it, chapter 1, it's the test of our faith to see if we will put God's word into action and actually believe what God said. Because let's face it, these scriptures, if everything's going well, if every, as some people would say, if everything's going hunky-dory, or if everything's going peachy keen, that's another phrase. You know, if you say, I don't, you know, I don't need to worry about the Bible. I'm fine. I'm well adjusted. I'm set for life. My bills are paid. I got it made. Well, I don't need to worry. You know, I'm fine. But that's not actually faith. Why? Because the Bible says the test of your faith is when the floods come, the storms come, when the unexpected happens, when the freak accidents occur. So I'll give you just an example of a freak accident and how the Lord used that freak accident to inspire the message I'm, that I'm sharing with you today. Uh, last week, I was going down Highway 94, heading up to the beach. It was a beautiful sunny day. Everything was peaceful, no stress, no worries. Everything's cool, right? Sun is shining. And we're, you know, my son Matt was with me, and we're going down 94, and I'm in, the, in my car behind a, a semi. And uh, as we're going in like a split second, this large, kind of twisty, weird looking pipe falls off the truck. And I mean, in a split second, and we're going about 75, and the truck's going about 75. In about two or three seconds, I see this big piece of metal coming straight toward my head. And I have no time to turn to the left or the right, and there's cars behind me, cars beside me, and I realize I am completely helpless. There's nothing I can do. And so this pipe ends up hitting the winch, the, not the windshield, but the, the hood right in front of me. And then it just strangely bounces sideways off to the side, kind of defying gravity. It didn't make any sense. And I was just like, whoa. My life was just spared in a split second. In a split second. Now, let me explain why worrying is such a ridiculous waste of time. The majority of things that people worry about are based on something they heard about. And so, and, and most of those things aren't gonna happen to you. And so you're wasting your time worrying about all these things that are never gonna happen. The real ridiculous thing is that the things that do happen are usually things that you are not even going to think about or even could imagine or conceive. So I didn't get up in the morning and say, Lord, I just want you to protect me from that pipe that's going to be coming at me at 3.30 in the afternoon, okay? <laughs> so what's, what's my point? Worry is a waste of time. Then you can say, well, you know what? Now I'm going to worry about the stuff that I don't know is going to happen. But see... The Bible says not to, to worry about anything because the Lord's already put that shield around you. Did you know, though, that that promise is for his children? It's not for everybody. So can you say, I am a child of God. His shield is around me, protecting me night and day. See, sometimes we look at Tragedies that happen to people who don't know the Lord, who aren't walking with the Lord. And then we say, well, what if that's going to happen to me? But see, you have to remember, God puts a special protection over his children. 
And here's the scripture, Psalm 91. This is in 11 and 12. We've got lots of scriptures today. Why? Because you need these scriptures so that you could say, hey, this isn't my idea. This isn't wishful thinking. It's not like, um, you know, you're trying to talk yourself into something, you know. It's not like, you know, you just sit there and go, I'm not be afraid, I'm not be afraid, I'm not be afraid, I'm not be afraid, and trying to talk yourself into it. That's not the saying. It's not, it's not convincing yourself. It's believing what God already said. And so here he says that we are his children. And in Psalm 91, he says in verse 11, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways and in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone what was he saying the angels are assigned to you that they've been assigned to you so not only do you have this shield from God protecting you you have angels all around you and they're not they're not you know taking breaks and not there. They're, they're assigned. They, I'm on a cigarette break. I can't. Sorry, I'm busy. They, they're there all the time. And this line about, well, what is God, they're going to protect you from tripping on a stone? Yes. I mean, how many people have ended up in the hospital because they tripped over something, you know? And so these little freak accidents, the angels protect you. But when it says that he shall give his angels charge over you, that means that they're assigned specifically to take care of you and protect you. And I don't know, you know, if I could see in the spirit what happened, probably that pipe, this angel just went and pushed it to the side, you know? I mean, they can do that. And some people say, well, I don't, I, I don't, I don't believe that stuff. That's, that's, that angel stuff, that's silly. Well, let me give you an example from the Bible that actually was proven not too long ago, and it's really awesome. Search it in YouTube if you're into this kind of stuff, if you're into this <laughs> far out stuff. But you know in the Bible it says that God parted the Red Sea and the Israelites went across. And that was their faith, right? Because do you realize they had to have faith to cross? Because on the sides are these big walls of water, and they could be thinking, what if this comes down on me? Well, they went across by faith. See, God made the water part. Their job was to walk through. It's the same with us. God will do the miracle, but then we have to walk through it. And so the enemy may, may try to give a cancer or something, but God says walk through it and you'll be healed. But you have to walk through to get your miracle. So they're walking through and they get to the other side. And then Pharaoh's coming through with his army and his chariots. And it says there's a bunch of chariots. And what does the Bible say? The angels not only watch over you and not only protect you, they fight for your protection. And so it says the angels knocked the wheels off the chariots. And so the chariots couldn't go forward or backwards. And then after the wheels were knocked off the chariots, the waters came back in. And it says that the whole Pharaoh's army was drowned and it was payback time. And you know why God did it that way? Because if you remember, when Moses was born, what was Pharaoh's command? Drown all the baby boy children age two and under. God is paying attention. And there's payback time for the enemy. So it's like, God's like, oh, you're going to drown my kids, huh? Okay. Well, you're... Now you're going to drown. And they did. They drowned in there. So some people say, well, I don't know that stuff. You know, the Bible is written by just a bunch of old guys in you know, the smoking pot. They didn't know what they're doing. Um, well, let me tell you something. Go, in, go on the Internet. Look it up. There are aerial photographs that were taken over the Red Sea recently by airplanes on a clear day. And you can see all the chariot wheels on the bottom of the ocean. They've got photos of it. All kinds of these round things. And what are these round, round big round things on the bottom of the ocean? The, 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 the wheels. 
of the chariots. They're there. The scuba divers went down. Yep, there they are. So, you know, this, this isn't fiction. The Bible isn't fiction. These aren't just some far out stories with symbolic meaning. Didn't really happen, it's just symbolic. No, this stuff happened. And so we see this and it builds our faith to know that God will fight for you. He's got his angels watching over you. They're assigned to you. And so let's say this, I am a child of God. His shield is around me. He's my glory, the lifter of my head. He's given me a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. He's given me all authority over the enemy. His angels are watching over me night and day. I even feel better just as I'm saying it. Because when you speak out what God says, it starts to feel better. But see, sometimes we forget what we already know. And we need to be reminded. And I had a reminder about God's protection when that, that crazy piece of pipe was flying right at me. And it just bounced the other way. Defied gravity, it didn't even make sense. Another time I was in a car fire, the car went up on fire and completely burned and I just got out of the car. Uh, my dad and I were in the car just, just in time. The car blew up and the Bible was sitting in the front seat of the car and it didn't burn. The Bible didn't burn. Bookmark was sticking out of the Bible two inches and it burned and stopped right at the pages. There was no smoke damage on the Bible. We have a God of miracles, a God of everyday miracles. And sometimes the miracles you don't even know because you've been spared some horrible thing. You don't even know. Some of them we get to know. But we have another scripture. Isaiah 54, 17 says, No weapon that's formed against you. See, the enemy tries to plan things. It says it won't prosper. So the enemy tries to plan something to bring harm. It says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises up against you, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of God's servants, and their righteousness is of me. And so as we look at that, again, we, we know these scriptures, but we need to activate them. Sometimes we need to just say them out loud. Don't just think it, say it. But let's deal with some of the difficult things for just a minute. We don't need to go real long, but we'll kind of deal with them because there are reasons that sometimes the bad stuff will still happen. So we say, well, I know this person, they weren't protected and, uh, you know, what's up with that? I thought you said in the Bible, God protects everybody. No, these scriptures are for his children. So you've got to remember that. Because if you see some horrible thing that happened on, on the news, well, what if that was somebody who wasn't walking with the, with the Lord and did, didn't know the Lord, you know? But let's even use 9-11 since it's the 20th year anniversary. Not something I want to celebrate. But, um, I mean, I always thought an anniversary was something to celebrate, right? Well, this is more a memorial. See, See, that day, that normally, on a normal day, there was anywhere from 8,000 to, to 9,000 people in that building. And about half the people didn't go to work that day. And many of them were Christians, and they just woke up, and they said, you know what, I don't know why, but I'm, I, I feel like I'm not going to work. So, so do, you, do you get my point? If you're listening and walking with God... He will keep you in the place of safety. There's nowhere in the Bible where it says he's going to lead you to destruction. In fact, you know what? It, what Psalm 23, one of the most famous psalms in the Bible, he leads me beside the still waters. He's, he's not taking you into chaos. He's leading you to the place of peace. What we, when we say this morning, in God's presence, what do you have? Peace. Love. 
It's not all this chaos, see? And so we're going to deal with the tough question. The tough question is, why, why is sometimes this bad stuff still happening? Sometimes children don't always obey their parents. And we need to make sure that we're walking in obedience. In the Galatians 2.21 it says, Do not frustrate the grace of God. Why is that scripture in there? That's for us. God's saying, I've given you full protection. You've got full coverage. I've got my angels watching over you. Don't frustrate me. Don't take stupid risks that you don't need to take. And don't ignore my voice when I'm warning you. Because if you walk away from my protection and you step out of my protection, then sometimes even the children can get hurt. Even the children of God can get hurt if, if they don't walk with the Lord. See, walking with the Lord, it doesn't have to do with just going to church. It has to do with listening to what he's telling you because he's talking to you all the time. And it's just like all those people on 9-11 on who they said, I'm not going to work today. They were really glad they made that choice. And you know there were thousands of them that didn't go to work that day that normally went to work. Thousands. So there were a lot of people that did listen to the Lord. See? And so we look at this. Our times are in his hands. Our life is in his hands. And the Lord is faithful. And it says in 2 Thessalonians, I always get it, Thessalonians. <laughs> Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 3, 3, it says, the Lord is faithful. And I love this scripture. It says, he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. It notices two things. It's not just protecting, he'll give you strength. So you won't freak out, won't have a meltdown, won't lose it when this stuff's coming at you. He'll give you strength. We need strength. So let's say that one out loud together. God is faithful. God is faithful. He will strengthen me. And he will protect me from the evil one. I am strong in the Lord and his power and his might. So let's look at the two F words, fear. Fear brings weakness. It weakens you as a person. It actually makes you just not feel like you can do anything. Faith strengthens you, and you feel strength coming up that you didn't know you had. How, how do I get this? I, I, I should be exhausted and worn out and discouraged, but I, instead, I'm, I'm just the opposite. I'm encouraged. How can that happen? Because God's spirit and strength and present, presence is ever-present. One more scripture, one more for the road, and then we're going to end with a song or two. It says in Psalm 41, 46, excuse me, Psalm 46, verse 1, God is our refuge and strength. Okay, now that's good to know, right? He's our refuge and our strength, but the, the last half is awesome. Because you say, well, what do I do when problems come? He's an ever-present help in times of trouble. So God's help is now. His help is now. Um, an ever present help. So you can call out to him immediately. Help, Lord, I need your help right now. And that's not being disrespectful or, or demanding. It's you, you need to expect that God will help you now. 
God doesn't say, well, let me check my schedule. You know, I, I'm helping a lot of other people right now. I, I'll, I'll see if I can, I'll see if I can get you in next week. It's like when I wanted to take my cat to the vet. And, uh, the cat was not not doing real well, and said, I need, I, I need, I need to get the the cat in right now. And then, and, I, and then I said, no. When they say, how about? How about uh, we could get them in toward the end of October? <laughs> like, I said, no, I, right now, the cat is not eating. The cat needs help. I need help right now. Well, I'm sorry. That's the best we can do. So then I got a better idea. I said, Lord, I pray that you heal this cat right now in the name of Jesus. And the cat had a tumor on the top of his head, almost the size of a, a tennis ball. I mean, this thing was just getting big. And it's like, oh man, you know, it looked ugly. And it was cracks in it, blood oozing. And it's just really bad. And the cat stopped eating. And I was like, so I just, I got really spiritually PO'd. And I just looked at that tumor and I said, I curse that tumor in the name of Jesus. I curse it. And the next day I went downstairs to see how the cat was doing. And I said, what's that tennis ball on the floor? The tumor fell off. It just fell off its head. It was awesome. But sometimes we're trying to get help Oh, I need help from the vet, you know? I mean, this is an animal, right? Does God care about the animals? You bet. And so the Lord took care of something because I couldn't, I couldn't get an appointment. And so I just want to encourage you today, activate the words in this book. You have the power. Let's end with, if the people could come up, we're going to end with a song. And um, there's a thing that thing that we call. And I know.